welcome to the Rose House. As we come in, this is the living room area. I guess we'll go ahead into the um, dining room. Here's our dining area where we have a lot of family style dining guests come. And usually uh, folks will make a different dish and they'll all eat together. People love to cook. Kitchen. Basic is people come in, they cook uh, their own food, prepare their own meals, uh, clean up after themselves. Um, it's all part of the empowerment process. To one of the bedrooms. Well, first I'll show you the multi purpose room. A lot of our philosophy is um, when you're having an emotional distress or, or in some kind of crisis, uh, we want people to remember that they're human beings and that they have other interests, and so we have a lot of professional instruments you'll see here. We do have professional art equipment, uh, exercise, uh, video games, who doesn't love video games, and computer access. And uh, So it helps people kind of you know, distract themselves from the crisis and from whatever they're dealing with and uh, focus on uh, just you know, enjoying themselves a little bit, doing something creative. My basic bedroom, uh, TV in every room, because uh, sometimes people can't agree on what to watch, you know, so they can come in here and watch their own shows. So. choices. So again, people will come in, they'll stay. Uh, at the end of their stay, they'll, they'll bundle up their linens and uh, either wash them themselves or uh, we have a staff person who's very conscientious and likes to do laundry, so she'll, she, she might do it for them, but uh, we really would like to promote people doing their own laundry and, and things like that. And then prepare for the next guest that comes. When we first opened, the dining room was part of the office too, but it was just too distracting. And, you know, we have files that need to be locked up and things, and uh, so we moved everything into this. This was another living area, and um, it just kind of gives us a little separation, you know, from, from the house ambiance. There's one down here, one upstairs. So we are accessible downstairs for the wheelchair. We have the bedroom and the bathroom here. Uh, oh, so there's a downstairs too. And there's three bedrooms upstairs. Then we have a, another kitchen. So you never have too many kitchens. Yeah, especially. <laughs> sure. The Rose House started in officially opened in 2001. Um, we're actually in our 11th year of operation, and um, it started mostly because of my own personal experience of being hospitalized in a psychiatric ward and the, um, the lack of quality and the lack of compassion and empathy that existed um, in the hospital where, you know, from the emergency room to being on the unit, you're pretty much dehumanized and you're treated as if there's something seriously wrong with you. And when I, when I got there, of course, the security guard stood over me in the emergency room, I waited for hours for a psychiatrist to come in and assess me, which only took about 10 minutes to say, you're bipolar and you're going upstairs. And that's, that was my introduction to being admitted to the hospital. And then once on the unit, literally given, you know, four different medications, put in my hand, take this, and here's your room, program starts at 9, and boom, that was my introduction to my mental illness, as they called it. So through the process of staying in the hospital, it just never, there was never a word of hope, never a word of recovery. Um, it was, you know, I, I became 
what I, in my eyes, I became a mental patient, and I didn't even know what a mental patient really was, but that's what I became, and left there um, hopeless, basically, come out of the hospital hopeless. When I did find my own recovery, which was through finding books and peer support, that's how I found my recovery, is uh, I learned more about um, self-help and peer support, and um, then was employed by a hospital um, as a screener in an emergency room, and that gave me the experience from the other side in my recovery to understand how people should be treated. So that through that experience, when I got the job here at People Incorporated, um, we had an opportunity to put in a grant for something. And what I had been thinking of from the stay in my hospitalization to uh, up until opening was it would be nice if there was a place to go that was like a home, it was comfortable, um, you could be in crisis, you could be who you are, and people would help you to understand how to develop goals for yourself to deal with crisis differently and learn from crisis. I was fortunate enough to then research it and find Sherry Mead who was running Stepping Stones in New Hampshire at the time and learned from her what they were doing and took kind of you know uh, the, the, the concept of the model and, and just tweaked it a little bit here in, in, in this region um, to make it what it is today which is a house where you can come, you can be in crisis, you can stay one to five days for free um, and you're going to get 24-hour peer support if you need it. And you're going to be able to talk about the issues that you're dealing with and, and how to look at crisis differently and how to move forward um, and, and not having to utilize hospitalization and go through the trauma of hospitalization or emergency rooms um, going forward. So that that's where the whole concept came from and, and, and how it started. And then since then, we've learned so much in... Um, how to help folks even move move more forward more in their in their recovery and in their life um, over the years, and uh, I like to say we're getting better at it, um, but it is a place where you can be yourself and be comfortable and, and learn uh, wellness plans. You can learn advanced directives. You can learn about pretty much anything you want, medication management or, or whatever. Um, but again, being yourself is important. So the house was designed to also have other interests in it. So that's why you see the music equipment, you see the, the art equipment, you see other things that um, might interest people in, in distracting them from their crisis or distracting them from what's what's bothering them and uh, and, and reminding them that they, they can make choices. It works, you know, it's it's a place that's comfortable, it's a place that um, people can come to and really really relax. It's a respite, it's a diversion, it's, uh, it's a learning opportunity and so um, here we are, 11 years into our 11th year, and still going.